Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is a big idea, and it's not new in the making. Those of you who think that George Bush coined that phrase, or he's the only one over the years that has uttered that phrase, you just haven't been paying attention. Adolf Hitler used virtually the same term, ladies and gentlemen. Stalin used virtually the same term. It has been used throughout history many times by many different people, all meaning exactly the same thing. When I was in the United States Navy, ladies and gentlemen, I was attached to the Office of Naval Intelligence for the last, well, not the last, but uh, for a period of approximately five years during my naval career. I had been four years in the United States Air Force with the Strategic Air Command and uh, was in the United States Navy about uh, 11 years. And uh, during that stint was attached to the Office of Naval Intelligence, where I learned most of the information that set me on a course to find out what was really happening to this country was as a member of the intelligence briefing team for the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, who at that time was Admiral Bernard Clary. I saw documents that usually only a very few people would ever see and would never see all of these different operations and programs and projects all at once, as I and the other members of the briefing team did. Now, let me explain to you how security clearances work in the government. There is no such thing, ladies and gentlemen, as above top secret. So when you hear people talking uh, foolishly, about 23 levels above top secret, they're lying to you. There's not even one level above top secret. Top secret is the highest level of classification of information in the United States government and the military service. There are sub-compartmentalizations of the classification of top secret. For instance, if you have a project that you don't want anybody to know about, even if they do have a top secret clearance, then you classify it by compartmentalizing it. An example of such a project might be um, building the B-2 bomber, where each person, you would only want to know just exactly what they had a need to know. So each person would be compartmentalized under top secret in an area that would give him or her only access to that particular piece of information or equipment that they were building or making or helping to assemble in order to produce the B-2 bomber. So the classification for building brakes may have been top secret wall plug. <laughs> it could be anything. And the people who had a top secret clearance who were working on that particular piece of information that had to do with wall plug could only see that information and nothing else. Because to be able to see information that had something to do with top secret roof, if you didn't have that roof clearance added to your top secret, you would not be able to see that information. Now, I'm just making these things up to give you some idea of what I'm talking about. While I was on the briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, I noticed one thing. All of the members of the briefing team and everybody who had anything to do with intelligence were members of at least one or more of the so-called secret societies known to most of us as fraternal organizations. I wondered how I was assigned to the Office of Naval Intelligence until I began to remember how I had filled out my forms to get my security clearance. It came to a page that folded out like some of the computer paper that goes through a printer. It's all attached. It, you can have 5,000 feet of, of uh, computer paper if you want to. Well, this was the form that folded out like that, and I forget how many sheets of paper there were included uh, that were attached like this, all folded up, uh, that contained the lists of just about every kind of organization that you can imagine, ladies and gentlemen. And I was supposed to check or indicate any of those organizations that I had ever belonged to in my life. 
And it cautioned me that if I left out any organization that I had ever been a member of, that I would risk losing or not obtaining my security clearance. Well, the security clearance when you work in the government or in the military is a big thing, folks, and nobody wants to lose their security clearance or be denied a security clearance. It's, it's shameful, as a matter of fact. And um, so I noticed that one of the organizations I had belonged to in my life, called the Order of the Demolay, or the Demolay Order for Young Men, was not included. So I checked Freemasonry because the Demolay Organization for Young Men, or Teenage Boys, as a matter of fact, is the adolescent um, version of the Masonic Lodge, so to speak. Little did I know that when I checked Freemasonry, so that I could never be accused of leaving anything out, any of the organizations that I had belonged to, that I would be signed to the Office of Naval Intelligence and then ultimately to the briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet. <clears throat> and so that's how I got assigned. And uh, while I was there, I saw, ladies and gentlemen, and learned very quickly that the American people are very seldom, if ever, told the truth about literally anything. For instance, while President Nixon, and folks, don't blame it all on President Nixon, they all do it. This is the established policy of the national security apparatus. You don't tell anybody anything. They don't have a need to know. And you never tell the American people the truth about what's happening, ever. It's just that simple. They don't have a need to know. Well, President Nixon was telling the nation on television that we were not bombing North Vietnam, that we had no troops in Cambodia or Laos, that we had not put any of our people in Cambodia or, or Laos, that we were not bombing or strafing or doing any air missions in Cambodia, Cambodia or Laos. I was sitting there with a group of high-ranking naval officers waiting for the latest bombing results of North Vietnam and the latest situation reports of our combat missions in Cambodia and Laos. So I knew early on that the American people were being lied to, and they're being lied to about everything, folks. The Vietnam War had nothing to do with communism, had nothing to do with any of the politics in Southeast Asia, as the American people have been told. It had absolutely everything due to do with the drugs in what's known as the Golden Triangle, and with the oil in the Gulf of Tonkin and the South China Sea. The number one mission of the United States Navy in the Gulf of Tonkin was not to support the troops engaged in battle on the ground in South Vietnam, but was to protect the oil exploration ships which were locating the places that were scheduled to begin drilling for oil when we won the war. <laughs> well, it turned out that we didn't win the war. At the same time, the Central Intelligence Agency was taking over from the French the, man the growing, the manufacture, and the exportation of drugs from Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and the, the, uh, what's known as the Golden Triangle in order to use those drugs to bring in tons and tons of money for their black projects that they cannot get money for from Congress and for the ultimate use in destroying all existing sovereign nation states and bringing about a one-world totalitarian socialist government. Now, folks, this was a long, long time ago that I saw this information. I was at the headquarters of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet between 1970 and 1973. In fact, I left in February of 1973. And uh, during that time, I learned all of the things that I needed to know to do the research since then to arrive at the information that I'm going to give you right now. And so pay close attention. If I don't finish it today, I will, in fact, continue it tomorrow. And this is what you need to know. For those of you who are going to laugh or scoff and say that you don't believe it, that's fine. I don't care. You do what you want to